But when you started oh, speaking, we couldn't uh, hear you. Fantastic. So oh, all right. So uh, let me let me recap. I, I was saying that the innate capacity of every Nigerian youth is a constant. I am one of those that have worked with several young Nigerians, and I've realized 99% of Nigerian youth that I have ever seen have this extraordinary innate capacity. Now, for what I've understood, the ability to apply capacity, the ability to express potentials is not dependent on the individual. And I was going to give you an example as a business owner, and which is a good analogy you made before we went on break. You see, when I bring people into Salt City Group, which is the business I run, I give them the opportunity to express themselves. I give them the opportunity to explore ideas. I give them the opportunity to be independent and not be micromanaged. You see, what we have today, when you say you are bringing in youth, yes, we praise that attempt. Yes, we respect but at least you are embracing the, uh, the, 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 uh, the availability of youth potentials in this country. However, the question we are asking ourselves, when you bring in a youth, are they allowed to express, explore, and represent the ideology of their generation? Or they are there to be maneuvered within the four-year cycle or eight-year cycle that the masters dictate? You see, the truth is, I am one of those that believe that the governance system in Nigeria, the Nigerian youth have more than capacity it requires to transform it completely. Now, you see, you talk about businesses. Some of us in business, we born this to, to power the business. These youths come in and we train with our capacity and we allow them to work. Now, let's assume that uh, a youth is brought into governance and this youth have this radical idea that does not align with political ideology, does not align with political showmanship. Please, why, what would you expect? The youth will put himself in that four-year box. He will put herself in that eight-year box and be limited by the time frame mindset of the masters. You see, I love what the previous scholar said about the institutionalizing education. I have advocated that over and over. You see, the only way we can know a genuine leader, the only way we can know a genuine system of governance is when they have a futuristic strategy that goes beyond the four years and the eight years. It's when they have a vision that even if this vision does not materialize in my time, that even if this vision does not materialize within my eight years such tenure, I am certain that another generation will remember my name. Another generation will sing my legacy. That is not what we have now, sir. Ada in Joss. Good morning. Excuse me. It's Ada. No, calling from Joss, what you say. I, well, I didn't really actually want to call, you know, but when I now listen to your guest, Stephen, he's on point. Nigerian youth are very resilient, you know. Well, you asked me, they, they, in fact, I've never seen youth that are so wonderful like Nigerian youth. The problem we have is, you know, lack of enabling environment. You know, no matter which way you look at it. And I mean, like, you know, not interested in even giving him uh, fish every day. What they want is a net to fish. In every environment, that's what the, go the government should offer. There's nobody, most of like, you know, it has talking to them that there, there are no more white collar jobs. They know that. But the problem is they don't have an enabling environment. And even the investors, they cannot come into invest because there's no enabling environment in Nigeria. You know, because they are the ones that will come and invest and then uh, uh, create jobs. And then some of the youth will also be self-employed. We have so many, so many uh, interventions that are just counterproductive. Look at Empire. What has happened to it now? When they were doing that Empire, I remember I was calling all the time and I was saying it, that is counterproductive. After two years, the ones around me, they are now jobless. I mean, how can you expect somebody to save uh, out of 30,000 naira you're paying the person? Most of them were not uh, equipped, nothing, nothing. They don't have any uh, starter pass or whatever, you know? So it's, uh, it's, it's just money down the drain. Ada, are you still there? Oh, I, it trailed off. I don't know if Ada had finished or if... Um, uh, anyway, well, um, uh, Stephen, that's another caller uh, who, again, has aligned with your position. 
uh, which is that merely putting youths into the picture does not necessarily guarantee uh, getting the benefit of having youths um, with their hands on the wheel. Uh, because there are situations where you were just explaining to me how in your company, for instance, uh, with your hands on the wheel, there's a way you, you know, you've just said you get fresh ideas you, you, because you allow them to express themselves. Um, if I understand you, are you saying that that's not the way it works in Nigeria? You don't think that the use that we are talking about and that people are saying we have a whole ministry for, um, they're not going to get very far, seems to be what's coming from you, uh, because they cannot operate in isolation of the environment they are in. Uh, uh, Mr. Yori, I can go on right now, right? Yes, please. All right, thank you. You see, uh, I, I want to, I'm trying to tilt the approach to this conversation so that we can have something very clear. You don't need youth in the governor, in governance to allow you to transform the country. You don't need youth in governance. Okay. Let me give you an example. Uh, okay. Bill Gates started Microsoft in the garage. Uh, Apple started Mark Zuckerberg in the dormitory. Elon Musk was sponsored. You don't need people that change the world does not necessarily have to be in governance. So the very idea that because you are bringing youth into governance means you are giving youth the chance is the biggest form of fallacy ever, ever. The truth is to allow youth transform this country, you don't need us in governance. You just need to give us the opportunity, give us the platform, and give us the enabling capacity. We will change this country. We will turn all these things in and out, and it will be rosy for the whole world to see. The problem we have is called political showmanship and a generational genocide. Sir, whether you believe it or not, at the point in this country, people within the age of 30 to 45, they were head of state. In this country, people within the age of 30 years old to 40, they were, they were ruling the government, they were ruling the country. And now, ask yourself, sir, so apologies, I mean, ask a, a typical Nigerian youth, who is probably 45 years old, does not even have an idea of what he wants to do in Nigeria. His mind is in Canada. His mind is in the United Kingdom. Because they know the opportunity is not there. They know that even if they put the opportunity in front of you, they will give you a knife instead of giving you a spoon. Because they don't intend for you to maximize the opportunity. That is the way the system is designed. And I'm telling you, they keep using the words youth and youth and youth. Sir, are we talking about youth as defined by the United Nations, which is 15 years old to 24 years old? Or are you talking about men? Men that have gone to the university system and the university system have passed through them. Men that are now 40 to 50. Men that are 30 to 60. Are they the one we are calling youth today? We need to clarify all this. Some a particular generation in this country has been stifled. A particular generation in this country have lost hope, and they've embarked on an exodus. They've embarked on an abandonment of service to patriotism. That is what is going on in this country, sir. Well, yeah. Uh, 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 favor in Kaduna. Did I get that right? Good morning, Favor. Good morning. Yes, you got it right. Favor. Go ahead, please. Um, I want to say good morning to everybody for this wonderful show, TVC. And um, good morning. Before, we... hello. I said good morning. Thank you for good calling morning. in. Go ahead, please. Okay. Now I agreed with um, Stephen Onia um, about what he said about Nigerian youth, uh, what is going on in the country. Now we we all know what is happening in this country how youth are deprived so many opportunities to change the country. So now what, because I'm a Nigerian youth and I want to know, like, what are the solutions? I'm asking this question to, um, I'm, I'm asking Stephen, um, what are the solutions? What are the things we can do, you know, to change this situation for a very long time? Oh, okay, well, thank you for calling in, Favour. Um, you, can, you can imply one or two things from what Stephen has been saying, that you don't need the youth in governance, uh, is what he is saying. Uh, because, let's face it, the uh, youth that do go out, apart from a small part of it, uh, they don't end up in governance wherever they've gone. So I think that's the point Stephen was making. But uh, Stephen, would you like to uh, proffer an answer to favor 
So what can yes, please. Thank we do? you very much, Fable. Thank you very much. And thank you for at least let's now stop being critical and start talking about solutions, which is very good. And I'm going to first go back to what I've said before, institutionalization. You see, I'm going to reference this one more time. Every nation is founded on a principle. America is founded on an idea. Some countries are founded on religion. Nigeria is founded on an ideology. We have held this country. You just need to serve. Like Mr. Umar said, we need to fix the primary education. We need to fix it. But that is where it starts from. Fix the university system. Restore the old glories. Empower the people that can impact the masses and not just the few. We need an infrastructural system where a Nigerian youth that has an idea, like Elon Musk, can have a channel to a governance funding system that makes idea not just work so that the, the, the governance master can do a jamboree and say, I made this happen and score a technology medal, but so that that person who have been able to ideate something in his mind have been able to assess government assistance like the like of Elon Musk has done, he can be able to build a sustainable system that is not just powered by sufficient government policies, but also backed up by an independent Business ability to explore and apply unique and uncommon knowledge. I'm going to remind, I want to reference something you also said, sir. You are very you are very correct that these our leaders, they are at a particular age of their life where they are not as acquainted with some of these dynamic trends that is going on around the world. So what should we do? We should leave them there because by virtue of African culture, the oldest must rule the youngest. Is that what we should do? Look at Canada. How old is their president? Look at these countries. How old are their leaders? If we continue to institutionalize old age because of wisdom, which is good. Wisdom can be good for consulting. It doesn't necessarily have to be for leadership. You can guide us. You can school us. You can mentor us. You can motivate us. But it's not compulsory. You rule by your head. It's not compulsory. Now, the truth of this matter is, just to go straight to the point, we need institutional systems in this country. We need an institutional system in this country. A system that in Nigerian youth can look at 15 years ahead and have confidence, knowing truly that the system available in this network of governance, in this network of, 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 of institutional, institutional system, that he can know that this will work for me if I stay in this country. Indeed. See, sir, I am speaking as someone who has worked with a lot of Nigerian youth in a business capacity and mentorship capacity. I can say for a certainty, sir, 90% of Nigerian youth have lost hope in Nigeria. When okay. we talk to them, they want to go overseas. When All you right. ask them, they have plans in Canada. That's mm -hmm. just the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. And, and I hope Favor was able to take something out of that because to uh, emphasize or re-emphasize what you have been saying, um, the most important thing, that also came from um, uh, Mukta calling, uh, calling in from uh, Kano, I believe. Um, uh, what, what you were saying is that the most important thing is the enabling environment where ugh, a 22, 23, 24-year-old youth can buy his own house, for instance. He can look forward, as you've just been saying, and you know, see a plan, see, see, see a plan that is workable, and I don't have to know anybody. It's no big deal. But the moment, I think I, I see what you're saying because that is not the way it is at the moment. Uh, uh, the system, I think what our people, what our youth uh, are going to do abroad is they're really running to meet with a system that is workable because when they get over there, then they're able to key into a system and things that they could not do here as private citizens, they are able to do in another country where they have decided, that, look, well, I'll take your citizenship, you know. So uh, those are the kind of things that I was talking about. And um, favor who called in, hopefully uh, you'll be able to extrapolate that and uh, get something from what we are being told here by our technology expert. After all of that, so the enabling environment much more than I think you see the inclusion of youth in governance as virtually unnecessary, and you can even refer to it as a bit of a showmanship. The much more important thing is the environment. Create an environment where youths who are smart, 
uh, any way you look at it, will know. They don't have to go out because there's nothing you're going to look for there that I can't do here. I think that in, is the essence of what you're saying, uh, if I got you right. Exactly. Very correct. So clo closing thoughts now, because I, now that we've got that point very, very clear, that at least as far as you are concerned and representing from your corner, this is the most important thing if we're going to leverage on the potential of the youth. Put the environment so that the youth can, can, can flourish, so that the youth can, can you know, flourish without any encumbrance, which is not the way we have it right now. Even if the administration has said that, that is where it's going. It's spoken about credit. Uh, as you know, if you want to do anything, buy a car in Nigeria, build a house, you've got to find a lot of the money yourself, uh, as opposed to uh, youths go over there, and at 24, 25, they are able to start the process of owning their own house, that kind of a thing, without resorting to any illegality. Those are the kind of enabling environments, ease of doing business, and uh, all, all like things. Well, uh, your closing thoughts from you then, uh, Steve. Uh, uh, closing thoughts from Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yori, for giving me an opportunity to give a closing thought. Uh, my closing thought is very simple, and it's to the Nigerian youth. We need to understand the pattern of shifts we've had with the ideology called Nigeria. We, were, we started from 1960 to 1978, where we had the Nigeria with AOD, and it was all about service and battle. And it was clearly declared in our national anthem, and we saw how it played out with the military systems. Now, we also have the Arise O Compatriot, where we have the love, and we have the service, and we have the faith. I want Nigeria and you to have faith. I want us to know that sooner or later, what is good for the goose is good for the gander. I want us to know that this country, whether they like it or not, whether it's already of us or not, a matter of time, Kama will play around and we will take possession of our destiny and we'll be able to take charge of the pilot seat of this country so that we can create things that's bigger than Facebook. We can create ideas that can be bigger than SpaceX. We can create self-driving cars that is bigger than Tesla. It's a matter of time. Whether they allow us or not, we need to have faith. It's going to happen. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen O'Neill. CEO, Soft City Group, technology expert, and youth development advocate. We really appreciate your time this morning. You're welcome. Indeed. You're welcome. So that's.